All right, everyone, it's been a long time coming, but there is a little bit of brightness seeping in through the clouds. It's not very bright. Uh, there aren't many little cracks appearing in the cloud cover, but you're seeing them start to emerge. Uh, and I'm speaking of resistance to censorship among people that were on the left, and I'm going to tell you something. Here's a little secret. It's just a theory that I happen to agree with. I think that the reason why so many people on the left, who otherwise they tend to be uh, against censorship, they're not part of the PC social justice warrior culture. I think the reason that so few of them until very recently have spoken out at all against, you know, the censorship, the sort of witch hunt style modern politicking, especially on social media, is out of fear, not out of agreeing with these witch hunts. I think it's simply that they're afraid of being targeted because they've seen that people that they understand, they know full well that many of us are not far right and yet we're still targeted by multinational corporations, by angry lynch mobs of self-righteous individuals who have uh, no sense whatsoever. They see that happening and they're afraid that they'll get targeted if they defend someone even if they have a good reason to. And this is how a moral panic eventually ends. Eventually a few good people, a few brave people, who are obviously and provably outside of the persecuted group start saying, hey, uh, what are we doing here? Uh, you've you've uh, really extrapolated a molehill into a mountain with regards to the primordial issue that inevitably is being used by the lynch mob and by the corporations, but it's become so expansive and so abusive it becomes an unstable and then a few cracks begin appearing in it. I'm starting to see that it's not just Mar in the wake of, like, Infowars being depersoned across the entire internet. Which, by the way, is still waiting for them to be apologized to and restored. I might have to wait a thousand years, but they should. I'm starting to see other people, I'm, I'm talking little people, get a little bit uncomfortable with the, with the censorship. Um, and, of course, in this sort of line of work, when you're talking to large numbers of people, sometimes you can get the inside scoop from people who know a little bit more. Um, and, and I think people would be interested to hear sort of the inside workings of some of these more left-wing groups and, and what their sense is. Uh, I do understand what it is and what they portray on the outside, sort of this hegemonic, uh, yes, you should be deplatformed, you evil racist Nazi. Inside, I think there's a little bit of nervousness because I think more of them, the independent side, of them, not like the Young Turks, the corporate side, the independent left is sort of realizing, hey, we could be targeted similarly, number one. Uh, number two, legal and, and sort of behavioral constructs are arising now that if the right wing were to, you know, take hold of the cultural zeitgeist, would certainly be able to use against us, people who they would declare degenerate or whatever it happens to be. Number three, in some cases, it's causing instability. You got to understand that the third component is this. Everyone likes a good debate. Most people do. They like an echo chamber that reinforces themselves, but then they like to go and antagonize people as well. The problem being, of course, there's no one to antagonize on some of these sites. You look at Reddit. Reddit has purged, you know, basically anything that's off color. That's the reason that Reddit existed, though. And so it's becoming more and more boring and useless. Tumblr, uh, which was already dying anyway. They've changed their TOS. They're now headhunting after, you know, basically anything that could trigger a snowflakes. Uh, it'll kill them off as a site. Nobody wants to be on a site that's like that. There's nothing interesting. One of the few reasons people go to Tumblr at this point is because they want to see people uh, crying bitter tears of outrage because someone in insinuated that the Y chromosome matter or something. It's basically why it exists. It's people who blog with their cats in the dead of night uh, and, and have no life and they're morally outraged all the time. And if it weren't for, if the right wing stopped existing, along with every other component of the non-left, the libertarians, the paleocons, tradcons, the actual alt-right, you know, the actual identitarian, if the entire lexicon of everything outside of liberal dumb were to suddenly not exist, the liberals would attack one another for various reasons. They'd find something else to be outraged about. An authoritarian will always be an authoritarian. Some of them are only opportunistic, and some of them have been diluted by propaganda, but those that are actually just totally morally outraged will continue to be. They're going to be the crying old, uh, outdated church wives. They're going to be like the old crones sitting by the street corner gossiping about their neighbors. That's what they have to look forward to when they're older. Right now, they've got, like, I'm a developer. So I make 30K in Silicon Valley's developer. Well, what do you do? Yeah, I sit here and I whine about things. 
I dye my hair on the clock and I get paid for it because no company dares to cast me aside because it'll be called racist or sexist or, you know, offensive or something and will target their advertisers. Well, these times shall pass. I'm very optimistic long term because I'm starting to see people that I know aren't, they're not right wing. Uh, they're starting to resist. It's like with the, uh, the hit piece the other day that was released by the Data Society, which, by the way, is a, partially a Soros asset tied with the New York Times. Totally unbiased here, people. Uh, look at the list of people on their list of, of who's who, far-right reactionary fanatic YouTubers. They've got Bunty King on the list. Bunty King. Tim, Tim Poole <laughs> is on their list. Candace Owens, who is literally like the most garden-variety neocon. Tree of Logic. Uh, these are these are the faces of Nazidom. Yeah. Uh, okay. In many cases, people who themselves aren't even white. Then you've got. I'm on the list. I'm a libertarian. Sargon, who's you know a liberalist or liberal or whatever you want to call him, he's on the list. Yes. This is a definitely a who's who of who will be in the next Reich. And then you get like the the statesman cover that I post on Twitter, and it's like fascism is back. Oh my God! No, uh, we're not the Nazis. We're the we're the persecuted minority, uh, actually, at the moment. I don't know that we're actually a minority. the The anti left is the majority, but it's persecuted as though it was a minority because people are not willing to speak out. If you've got people being tar, it's like during the Satanic Panic. The average person didn't actually, I think, believe uh, in in the sort of uh, uh, scope of the Satanic Panic. I don't think they actually believed that Iron Maiden was going to cause kids to cut their parents' heads off or something. I don't think they actually believed that graveyard vandals uh, were inevitably a devil-worshipping cult because it was happening anyway, and it's like teenagers, they get drunk and they go in and spray paint the pentagram because they're listening to Slayer or something. Uh, that's really what was happening. The majority of people were never on board with it, but the majority never spoke out. And so a group that was really just a vocal minority seemed to be the hegemonic force. Eventually, though, people started speaking out, and very quickly it disappeared. It falls out of vogue because people are like, okay, that's enough, cut it out. That, too, will happen here. It's just a matter of when. I'm beginning to see the very first signs of it impending. It will be very quickly uh, that it moves once that begins. Once you get a few more mainstream voices speaking out, like even Obama coming out, for all it's worth, because, I mean, it was basically rejected, Obama comes out and says, well, the identity politics stuff, it's being taken too far. And, you know, we're all Americans and stuff. It's very conciliatory. Now, I, I consider Obama a corporate liberal ne uh, evildoer. He's a warmonger, uh, a big state lover. I, I don't like Obama. But for all it's worth, it did encapsulate, hey, at the very least, for opportunistic reasons, I realize that this moral panic will eventually die. I'm getting off board now. Bye bye. See you later. When opportunists start getting off of what was once very lucrative, when they give up the wedge issues, isn't that a sign that other people who are wise get off as well? I, I, I mean, get off, you know, in the sense of leaving the movement. The movement's so-called. It's always loose. It's 80% people who have been fooled, like 15% opportunistics, uh, pearl clutchers and gossips and crones, and then 5% like corporatists and people trying to hawk shitty books and stuff like that. Pe people who are, you know, in the power structure of the, the country or whatever. Uh, that's really what it's all about. So this moral panic uh, has begun to die, thankfully. Uh, hopefully it continues to die off at an extended rate. That's about all. Peace out.